Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video I'm going to be working on my 13th story inside of December Daily 2020. So today's story is actually all about past stories. One of my favorite things to include every year inside of a December Daily album is at least one story from a childhood Christmas memory. And I like to do this for both myself and my husband. So in today's spread, I have a couple of things going on here. So uh, first of all, <laughs> I took the product play for class. I actually was a contributor, but I also took all of the other classes and de decided to go ahead and scrap lift a few of the ideas that I found in that class, which included a lot of today's spread. So the left side here that says be merry and bright and love this memory, this was a page idea from Laura Wanzik's texture lesson. And this actually, this side was too. Uh, the only thing that I really did different than her was to go ahead and do some stitching around the outside with some embroidery floss just to help give it a little bit of pop off the page. And then for the right hand side, she had a three by eight pocket that she made with um, different vellum pieces that she stamped and embossed and did different things to. So I decided to do something very similar. I used some of my colorful vellum papers. I stamped and embossed and cut them into circles and then made a full page pocket instead of the smaller one. So that's what I have over here with some pattern papers behind uh, behind it just to give it some extra interest and to bring that black and white polka dot to both sides of the page. Tucked into this pocket are going to be these two trees. Uh, these were a cut file from Allie uh, that she gave us in the prep party. So if you have not taken the December Daily Prep Party, uh, this is where you would be able to find the, that this specific cut file right here. So I did something very similar to her. I put some vellum in the window. I had this like star pattern. It's kind of um, silver and almost a little bit a little bit foiled looking. Um, I die cut out some of my own felt stars and stitched those down the middle of both of these trees. So, um, and, and they're just pattern paper. So the inside, there's a pattern on both of them. This I believe is from the Marigold collection from uh, Maggie Holmes. And this one is from the Crate Paper Hey Santa line from this year. So these are where the stories are going to be housed. And then they are going to just slip into the pockets back here and um, like poke out the top. So it's just going to be kind of like that. It's fun. I like the non-traditional colors and I just, yeah, I think it's going to be super fun. So I'm going to actually set the album. Oops. I'm going to set my album to the side here so I can show you the rest of what we are going to be working with today. I don't necessarily need that. All I need that for is just to stick the pieces in. So we have these two trees. What I did is I, I wrote a story for myself, which ended up being two triangles worth, and then my husband wrote a story as well. So I created a canvas in Photoshop, and I'm actually going to take you to the computer to show you how I did this, uh, because I made them the same size as the triangle. So all I have to do is trim them out, and they will be able to fit inside of this tree shape here. So um, I have two for myself and one for my husband. In addition to these, both of our stories ended up having a movie type theme to them. Mine was for Polar Express and my husband's was for a Christmas story. So I got some pictures from the internet and created a clipping mask with that same triangle shape, which I'll also show you on the computer. And um, these are going to go inside as well. These are actually, these are what are going to these photos are what will poke out from behind the vellum. So you'll be able to see the photos behind there. I think it will look really cool. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to create a flip book sort of inside of these little trees. So they will each have a couple of pages in them instead of just having the one picture behind. That way I can put both the stories and the photos inside of these. So that is my plan for today. First, I'm going to take you over to the computer, show you how I did the text and the photos, and then we're going to come back, assemble these little books together, and then that will be it for today. So let's head over to the computer and get started. 
All right, friends, so I wanted to bring you over here to my computer just to show you a couple of tips and tricks or hacks for how to get your photos and your journaling into that triangle shape like I have uh, in order to create a project like this one using that tree cut file from Allie's class or from the prep party. So uh, what I want to do is to start by creating a canvas that is going to be the absolute max and the ab the absolute maximum width and height of the triangle that's inside of that tree form. So I am going to create a new canvas, uh, which you can go file, new, or control, control N. Um, okay, so my particular file, because I believe I resized mine, is five and a half inches wide. So we're gonna come over to the preset details and go to inches. So mine is five inches wide by six and a half inches tall. And the other thing I want you to make sure is that you're putting in this 300 uh, pixels per inch resolution. That's going to be very important for keeping things to scale. So we're going to hit create and this is going to give us a blank canvas. So the next thing that we're going to do is create our triangle shape. So the next couple of steps, unfortunately, are only available inside of Creative Cloud, uh, which is the program I'm working in, because I'm going to be using the pen tool, and the pen tool is not inside of Elements. So I do apologize uh, if you are an Elements user, because I don't necessarily, um, this exact method won't necessarily work. But there is a workaround where you could essentially just use a line shape to create lines that would make the outline of your tri of your triangle shape. But for Creative Cloud, what I want to do is I wanna hit the control button on my keyboard. I'm gonna hold that down and hit the quotation marks. When I do that, it's going to bring up this grid on my page, which will help me identify the exact middles of where I need to place my, my anchor points. So next we're gonna come over to the left-hand menu. We're going to select the pen tool. And then I wanna go up to the very top and I'm just going to put a single dot by clicking in the exact middle. And this is why I wanted that grid is so I could find that exact middle. Then we're going to come down to the bottom right-hand corner and place a dot there, another one on the bottom left-hand corner, and then we're going to go back up to the top uh, where the little box is highlighted blue and we're going to put another one there. Um, you can see that mine filled in with this grayish color. So up here in this top menu, there's the fill and the stroke. So I don't want to have a stroke, so I have that as off. And my fill, you can use any color you want. I suppose gray is fine, <laughs> so we'll just leave it at that. And we're going to hit enter. When we hit enter, everything's going to come into focus and it's now going to be a shape instead of a bunch of anchor points. Uh, but to see this better, I do wanna take that grid back off of my page. So I'm just going to hold control and click on those quotation marks again, and that's going to clear the grid off. Uh, then the last thing I wanna do here is come over to the shapes uh, layer, the layers menu and right click on my shape and then we're going to rasterize it. That's just going to help make this much easier to work with um, for the next couple of steps. So now that we've got this to here, the next thing I wanna do is show you how to use this as a clipping mask or as a, um, what do I wanna call that? A, a layer template, that's what I'm looking for. I wanna show you how you can use this as a layer template to create your photos in that triangle shape. So let's just grab a photo here. This is one of the ones I'm going to use. Uh, and it is also important, just as a heads up, when you are looking for photos like this online, to make sure that their resolution is as high as you can possibly find. Usually 500 pixels or higher is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to uh, select all of it and copy my photo. And then when we paste it, you're going to see that it is much smaller than my actual shape. That's okay. So on here on Creative Cloud, I'm going to hit Control and T so that I can transform this and make it bigger. I'm just going to expand it to where I think it will look good. Uh, we'll hit Enter and that will clear it up here. Then over in the Layers panel, we're going to right click on the photo and select Create Clipping Mask. So that is going to clip my photo inside of this triangle and I can move it around if I want. I can again transform it, make it even bigger if I want to make it even bigger, like that looks pretty good. 
hit enter, clear it up, and now this is going to be my photo. So I can uh, merge all of these layers down if I want, save this as a JPEG, uh, whatever you want to do to get this printed, and then I would print this off and that will go into my book. So I did the same thing for the other photo that I'm using in today's project and those I have over at the craft table. So let's now, we're going to delete off the photo there. And next I wanna show you how I did the text. So for the text portion, I actually want my shape here to be white so that I can have black text on a white background. So what I want to do over in the layers panel, first I need to get rid of the white background so that it doesn't all blend together. So I'm gonna, I'm going to click on this little lock box. It's going to unlock it. So now it shows up as layer zero instead of background. And I can just go ahead and delete that. So now we're seeing a transparent background with my shape as the only thing that's not transparent. Now I want this shape to be white, so I'm going to bring my white to the foreground, grab my paint bucket tool, and just paint it white. That's the easiest way for me to do this. And then we're going to switch that foreground to black, because I want black text, and then the background's going to be white. We will grab my text tool here, and we're just going to draw a box to put text in. And I do want this to go the full width and height of this page, or of this triangle. Now from here, this part's a little bit tedious, but this is the way that I go about doing these. I uh, make sure that my text is centered, so it's aligned to the center. And then I am just going to manually enter these. So actually I'm gonna put this down so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to manually hit the enter button in order to get these pieces into the triangle shape here. So like, see that's a little bit too much. So maybe we'll go, nope. Actually, we just need right here. Um, and this is essentially what I do to get my text inside shapes like this. Um, there's, you know, I'm sure there are many easier ways to go about doing this, but since I don't really uh, have time at this point to like look into any other options, this is what works best for me. Uh, so this is what I did is I just typed out my journaling. Now, obviously this right here is just the gibberish uh, the gibberish text that auto populates when you put in a text box. So this is not my journaling. We're just going to pretend it is. And um, yeah, let's do that. I just want to get it all in here so I can show you then we're going to move it a little bit. So we'll just get this all in here. Um, and we're almost there. I think one more should do it. So then what you can do from here, like let's say, okay, that's good, great. You can also move it. So if you want it to go down a little bit, it'll maintain the triangle shape there, but uh, you can move it so that there's a little bit more white space on the edges if you need that. So then what I would do for printing this, if I had my text the way that I liked it, I knew it was spell checked and everything's good, then the next thing I would do is merge my layers together. So I would go to layer and merge visible, or you can hit control shift E, that works too. So then I want to add this to a canvas that I can actually print it on. For me, that's eight and a half by 11. That's typically the canvas size that I'm working with for my printer. And I'm just going to go to my triangle shape, hit uh, select all, so control A and copy, control C. And then we're going to add that onto my canvas here using control V. So you can see that there's a problem though, right? Because I have black text on a white triangle, when I put it on a white background, everything blends together. And I don't necessarily want that because I wanna be able to know where to cut this out when I cut it. So what I will do is have that layer selected with the triangle. We're gonna go up to the edit button and down to stroke. I'm going to keep my stroke width at one pixel, but I might readjust this down to a lighter gray just to make it a little less obvious. Hit the OK button and hit the OK button. And what that just did was it drew a line around the outside of my shape as a whole. So now I can move this wherever I want it to go. I can add in my other journaling pieces if I want, and then I can go ahead and print this and cut it along those lines in order to know that this shape is going to in fact fit inside of that tree shape. So that is what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and finish up printing out what I need to print. And then I will meet you guys back over at the craft table and we will get these little tree books assembled. 
So now that we're back at my craft table, the next thing we're going to do is get everything trimmed out. So it's really hard to see on, uh, on this camera view right here, but there are those really, really light gray lines. So I know exactly where to cut these out. Um, this makes this whole process so much easier. I don't have to guess where to cut. And I know that once everything is trimmed out that it's going to fit in those, in those little tree booklets perfectly. So I got all of the... Uh, all of the journaling cut out first. Next, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the photos here, which those don't have any lines, but uh, because they are photos, it's really, really easy to see where those lines are. And then um, because my journaling is two triangles long and Aaron's is only one triangle long, I'm actually going to take this pattern paper. This was from the six by eight paper pad from Crate Paper Hey Santa. And I'm just going to use a pencil to lightly trace a line on the back of it and then we'll trim that out. So that's gonna go on the backside of the photo in his booklet so that it can all be nice and finished on the inside. Mine, I don't really, I don't need the pattern paper because I wrote a lot of words and so my journaling fills up the whole space so I don't necessarily need it. The next thing I need to do is create the hinges that are going to hold the pages together here. Now I do miscalculate and I think I'm, you know, at this point, I think I'm going to need to do two hinges for each of these booklets uh, in order to make it have the three pages, but I actually only need one. So I will take a little bit of this video out so that you don't have to see me make the multiple hinge thing. And uh, just know that when I am taking those apart, it's just because I, I miscalculated it. So I trimmed off some paper. This is just regular old copy paper. I trimmed it to two inches wide by seven inches long. And then I'm going to go ahead and score each of those in half. It's just going to make folding it a little bit easier and the uh, spine portion to have a better crease in it. So you'll see me do four here, but I really only needed two uh, to make this. So you can you can create more pages in these by uh, combining those hinges together and making multiple little um, sections for your pages to hold on to. But for me, I only needed technically the one. So I will fold those in half uh, just to get them nice and creased down. And then once I do that, we will start getting these adhered onto the photo. Um, the hinge portion on the photo, because of the way the cut file is made, the hinge portion can go straight up against the edge of the photo, one of the long edges. And when I originally cut out those two trees, one of them, the one that's pink and the one that's technically mine, I accidentally put my pattern paper on the cutting mat the wrong way. So it cut out where the uh, the spine or the hinge portion, I suppose, is on the right side instead of being on the left side. So it doesn't open like a standard uh, English book, <laughs> which is fine. It it was totally fine. I only had that one piece of paper, so I couldn't redo it. And I really liked the look of the pink. So I'm just going to go with it and it's going to be fine. So here you can see I added some of that roller adhesive and then I just put the picture on the edge of it, lined it up with that left side because Aaron's does open the correct way. And then I open it up to the middle. I'll add some adhesive on the back of the photo and then we're going to put that pattern paper right here. On the opposite side is where I'm going to place his journaling. And the best way that I have found to add these pages in here so they close on top of each other and there's no hang off or anything like that is to, um, is to add my adhesive and then place the triangle portion on top of the pattern paper side, like just like this upside down, and then pull that hinge down onto the paper. That's going to make it so that when it opens and closes, it stays aligned. The last thing for this one is to add adhesive to the back of the journaling portion. And then this is going to go straight into the book. So uh, just right here, and I'm, I'm going to line up the open edge there um, so that I know everything goes in the way I want it to. And then I will also use my bone folder to just crease that edge one more time just to help it all stay down a little bit better um, since it's popping up with the extra papers in between. And it does help, like it does actually keep it down. 
So there's my first little booklet done, and now we're going to move on to the one for me. So I'm going to take apart that double hinge there again, and we're going to repeat the process. So we're going to add adhesive to the uh, triangle here, the photo, which for me is a photo from Polar Express. Uh, Aaron's was a photo from uh, um, A Christmas Story. And we will stick the photo on the hinge here. And this is where I had to be very careful to make sure that I had the right side uh, adhered down. So for mine, it's going to open on the right side. So I needed to make sure that the hinge was also aligned on the right side of the triangle. So we're going to do that, trim off those excess pieces, and then do this all over again. So we'll add adhesive to the back of the photo. For mine, I'm going to have journaling on both sides. And... Um, I decided what I wanted to do here because it seemed really odd to have my first bit of journaling on the right and then my second bit of journaling on the left. So instead, I just put um, I put the second bit right here on the right and the first portion of it on the left. So you still read the journaling from left to right, even though uh, it opens the opposite way. That just made the most logical sense to me. So that's why I did it that way. Um, and then again, we will take the journaling, the second triangle there, put it upside down on top of the first one and pull the hinge down on top of the back of it so that it all adheres down, everything's aligned and it all looks really good. So we'll add a little bit of adhesive to the back of this and put this one in the book. This one I don't get in as well <laughs> as Aaron's. It's like a little bit, there's a little bit hanging off the edge. So I do just trim that off. Like it's, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, to just trim it. And I did make these triangles just like a itty bitty bit smaller or shorter than the file itself, figuring that um, it might not be, it might not look bad to have a little bit of a border of the original pattern paper around those triangles. So, and I, I ultimately, I do like the way it looks. So it's, you know, that was a good decision, I think. We will press this down one more time with our bone folder, and then these are ready to go inside of that pocket. All right, friends, so that finishes up today's spread. I think that this came together really, really cute. Like, I love how these little trees look poking out of the pockets here, but I love that this, that this worked, like making these into little books where you've got the photo and then you've got the story you know, and then the photo and the story. And Erin is not as wordy as I, which is totally fine. So I just added some pattern paper on the inside of his flap instead of all, you know, on mine, it's like lots of words. Um, but I think that these are super cute and a great way to use this file, this tree file to add stories and photos into your albums. So uh, what I will do, I can just briefly tell you that Erin well, I'll, I'll, let me go make sure it's over. Wait. You don't mind if I read yours, do you? Which I know. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's not anything. I just want to make sure you're okay with that before I, before I do it. And then you're like, I don't want you to read that. Okay. I'm just checking. This is what Mary brought to do today for us. This is an ornament from when I was a kid well, that we made with my grandma. And I've got oh, oh. Um, supplies to make it. Did, is he find Mary already? No, she's on my desk. Oh. Mm -hmm. but no, she hasn't yet. Everybody. Which is fine. I'll put everything back here once.
yeah, that'll hold it better. Okay. <sighs> All right, friends, that completes this spread for today. I think that this came out so, so super cute. I love these little trees poking out from the pocket. I love how bright and colorful this is. And I think this idea was an awesome one for including these really cool trees, but making them into books that hold photos and stories. Uh, for Aaron's, his story wasn't as long as mine because I'm just a wordy person. So um, I put a pattern paper on the inside of his and mine just has lots of words. So um, the last thing I have to do is just to read you the stories that go along with today's page and then that'll be it for today. So um, Aaron's is this one with red and I have the picture from a Christmas story in here. Uh, and then he said that every year, even now, my Aunt Sandy and Uncle Mito host Christmas brunch. It would be a breakfast feast with eggs, bacon, and the main feature waffles and good syrup. There was, of course, orange juice for the kids. And as we got older, we had mimosas. We would eat breakfast together and open gifts from each other. All the while, a Christmas story, you shoot your eye out, playing on repeat on the TV. My other aunts and uncles and cousins would all come over if they could. Now that we're all older with our own families, it's hard to make it every year, but we still make sure to go every other year. Um, so that's just a little story of their Christmas Day celebrations at his aunt and uncle's house, which is really, it's such a nice event that we go to. Uh, we spend Christmas with my family every other year and with his family on the opposite years. And then um, we do Christmas Eve like flip-flopped. So we'll do Christmas Eve with his family and Christmas Day with mine. And then the following year, we'll do Christmas Eve with mine and Christmas Day with his family. It just works out so that we can participate in the events at least every other year. Uh, and then for mine, I have uh, the pink on the outside. The picture for mine is from uh, Polar Express. And my journaling says, uh, I remember how excited Oh, I should also mention that my prompt for the story today is I remember when or I remember. So I remember how excited my whole family was when the Polar Express movie came out in 2004. The book was a story that had been part of our childhood Christmases ever since we were little kids, a book we would make a point to, re to read each year. I was in high school at the time in the 11th grade. I remember driving with my family 45 minutes to Lansing where the closest IMAX theater was located. We met up with my mom's side of the family, all of us together, both of my grandparents, my great aunt Judy and great aunt Pat, and all of the aunts, uncles, and cousins. We were a big group. I remember sitting down in the theater and marveling at the sheer size of the screen. And when the movie started and the 3D animated film started, I remember feeling transported into one of my favorite Christmas stories. It was beautiful and magical. I remember when the movie finished, we migrated to the lobby and chatted for probably Oops, looks like I uh, messed up on that a little bit. Whatever, we migrated to the lobby and chatted for probably an hour. We always had a hard time with goodbyes from family events. I remember leaving the theater with a full heart, full of love and Christmas magic. I'm pretty certain this was the last big holiday thing we did with the entire family intact before we lost my great aunts and my grandmother. And for that, it holds a truly special place in my heart. I'm so grateful that we were all able to be together to experience the magic of this movie and the joy of being together. So that is my journaling. I did, I, uh, it looks like I was going to put a paragraph over here and make this a little bit bigger and then I didn't. So I've got a paragraph here that is also over here, but whatever, I'm not changing it, I'm not redoing that. So it is what it is. And, uh, you know, that's part of crafting every day is that we do make mistakes and I'm okay to live with that. So that is my story for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing these little booklets come together and maybe it gave you a new idea for how to use this cut file. Um, I will be back again tomorrow with uh, my story number 14, which I don't even remember. Oh, gingerbread houses, right? We're gonna be making gingerbread houses tomorrow. So I'll be back um, tomorrow with that process video. And uh, yes, so if you enjoyed this video, I would love a thumbs up down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see all the future content I have coming your way. And um, yeah, until tomorrow, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will catch you uh, in tomorrow's video. <laughs> Bye now.